All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's Jay again, and it is cherry season. Oh, man, look at these beauties. And you may ask yourself, well, hey, Jay, it's fall. Why are you getting cherries? Because these are not regular cherries. These are Barbados cherries. And we're going to talk a little bit about this, this fruit tree. Let's call it more of a bush. And let's see if we can get you guys some success on getting these cherries because man these things are awesome and they produce very quickly meaning they're going to go from flower to fruit to where you can eat them in less than two weeks so this is one of the fastest cropping fruits that are out there i mean basically you just turn your back and turn back around and here's some some nice cherries for you so let's talk quite a bit about this tree because i get a lot of questions on the barbados cherry tree and I'm going to show you several that I have here in, um, in the ground. And I've got some in pots and I've got some in planters. Uh, these are one of my favorite, absolute favorite fruits. And it's cherry season, so I figured I'd go ahead and, and make this video. So look at those beauties there. And this, this, this Barbados cherry tree bush is just covered in cherries. Let me see if I can kind of go over some of these. Now some of them you'll see that are green, like these guys right here. They're green, so they're not quite ready, but they'll be ready in the next few days. So this thing is just coated, coated with cherries, and you gotta really, like I said, look for them while they're green. There's one there. There's one there. There's a nice double coming on right there. Another nice double coming on right here. And man, they're just hanging down everywhere. So you can kind of see the branches. I'll back up here in a minute. You can see that the branches are just kind of weeping, weeping with cherries. Look at that. Look at those. So what's really cool about this one is I've got this one in a planter. And this one's right up next to my house. As you can see here. So this is in a big planter. This is about a 100 gallon planter, basically. You can see these big, big planters, and I've got it right here. And you can see that it grows up. I might get the sun in the way. And it arches over my walkway here. So I've got this nice big Barbados cherry growing in a planter up near the house, and then it kind of weeps over here. I kind of have to duck underneath it um, when I'm walking back here. I'm probably going to pull it up here soon, though straighten it out a little bit but man just beautiful beautiful fruit let me get on this other side see if i can get it any better oh wow there's more cherries out here too and you can see the blooms also so oh man I always get excited when these when i do these fruit tree videos okay so there's the flowers little, little pink kind of inconspicuous flowers and cut and in fact, if you don't catch them one day, they're kind of gone the next. And I don't hand pollinate any of these. You can see way more of the fruit out here now. And man, look at those. Look at those beauties. And this is the stage you want to eat them in. So you see how nice and dark this cherry is right here in particular. I mean, that's almost a black, a black cherry. You can kind of see it a little bit more in the light there. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And then you put it in the shadow and see it's almost black. It looks like a black cherry. So this is when you want to eat them. Look at that nice one right there. And they're full-size cherries. I mean, look at that. As compared to my hand there, that's a full-size full size little cherry. It's got three little seeds inside. But the three seeds take up no more room than like the regular pit in a regular cherry. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. It's getting just soaked with, with flowers and fruit. Oh man. So yeah, you can see that out here in the sun where it's kind of weeping over, you're getting a lot more, a lot more fruit. Now this is a little bit of a larger specimen. So let me see if I can back up here. Get us refocused. There we go. So this one here, it almost reaches or does reach the top of my house there so this is a nice big specimen tree in a planter right next to my house where i can just come out here and kind of duck underneath it and grab a few cherries as i'm walking around the yard so let's talk about a little bit about the care on these guys 
And I'm gonna go over a couple more too. I'm gonna show you a few of these, um, a few more of these in the ground, because like I said, I, I love this plant and I have these kind of, kind of everywhere. Okay, so this is one that I've got up against my espalier wall here, and I've got quite a few of these. These are up against the fence row, and this is the one, two, three, fourth plant in from the street. So this is a very heat-loving, heat-tolerant plant. Thank goodness there's a few of these because it just gets super hot here in Arizona. And you can see this one's also taking on sort of a weeping behavior, and it is also, let's see if I can get these guys, it is also starting to, to bloom. And so it's going to fruit all out here on the outside edges of the plant for the most part. So you can kind of keep these pruned down a little bit and you'll get plenty of fruit because most of the fruit's gonna be on the, on the outskirts of the tree. All right, let's go take a look at another one. Okay, this is another one that I've got up against my my espalier wall and this one is a little bit more trained like a tree so this one is this one is quite tall actually nice big leaves look at that big beautiful leaves now that we've cooled down a little bit they get a little bit larger but they do love the heat and you can see up there oh man just beautiful beautiful cherry nope not quite ready i'm not going to pick that one but this one's tall this one is definitely over over my house and these are a lot more mature trees so that is one of the questions that i get asked a lot is when will these things fruit so there's really kind of two answers to that question, when will these guys fruit? And one answer is they'll fruit when they feel like it, which I know kind of sounds crazy, but they need to be in a kind of like a happy place and be established in that area. Otherwise they're gonna start to lose a lot of their blooms and blow off a lot of their flowers for the first couple of years. So you want one of these that is a little bit um, more mature and it will set way, way more of its fruit. Let's go look at another one. Okay, so this is another one, or I should say another two, that I've got planted back here in the food forest. Like I said, I've got these kind of all over the place because I really love the fruit. So I wanted one of these kind of, in, you know, say every 20 feet away from each other. Now these two happen to be right next to each other, and that is just because they get better pollination when they're real close to each other. Now they don't have to be exactly this close, but I just wanted two real nice Barbados cherry bushes or trees to kind of fill in this section that's back here in the back that I've got near the shopping cart here with the uh, with the dragon fruit, which by the way is doing really well growing through that, uh, through that trellis or that shopping cart there. But I needed something to kind of protect it because it was getting a little bit sun scalded. So I put these Barbados cherries in here, which incidentally are bulletproof. You can think of these kind of like a pomegranate. I mean, these love the heat. Um, they come alive during that 95 and 100 degree. As that starts to pick up, you'll start to see a lot more activity on your Barbados cherries. You'll start to see a lot more blooms and you'll start to see a lot more fruit. Now these do fruit twice a year. They're gonna fruit in the spring when it's a little bit cooler so they can set the cherries and they're gonna fruit in the fall right now when it's cool again. And since they put on fruit so rapidly, you will definitely get these in the fall. So you can add these to one of your fall fruit collections. Um, the flowers, they're pink when it's cool, cool weather, and that'll kind of tell you whether or not it's going to set. So if you've got pink flowers, the cherries will probably set. If the flowers have turned white, and that's due to the hot summer, they sort of dump that pink color and they're going to go to a white color. That'll tell you that those will probably not set. So these fruit twice a year. And like I said, you want one that's a little bit more mature. I'll go back to the maturity issue. So you want them to be at least three to five years old before they start fruiting. To answer the question of when will these things start to fruit. They got to be in their happy little spot for at least a couple years. And they got to be a little bit more of a mature plant. So when people buy a smaller plant of these, they may be waiting, say, three to five years for that thing to really start to produce the cherries. I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about really pump them on um, 
on the tree. Um, so that's more or less sort of the size that I deal with. I deal with some of the larger sizes, the more specimen size. And the only reason for that being is because a lot of people have the complaint of when am I going to get the fruit? And so after hearing that so many times, you just start to deal with more, more mature plants. So this is one that you can deal with a little bit of a larger plant if you're wanting the fruit a little bit sooner or if you don't mind waiting you can plant them as a small plant and let them grow more to this larger size and then they'll start uh, producing uh, producing fruit uh, they will fruit in pots also which i will show you a few of those here in just a moment but uh, they fruit heavily once they get planted in the ground that's where their happy spot is um, so uh, let's go take a look at another one. I think I've got one just right back here. I've got them everywhere, like I said, because um, I really love the plant and I really love the fruit. You can kind of see him poking out down here. Get over here on this side. Yeah. So this one's doing really well, too. And this one's in the full sun. Also, and then right across the wall, I've got another another one and another two by the street and they're just like i said they're just they're just everywhere they're one of my favorite favorite plants so we went over a little bit on food as far as when you're going to get uh fruit off of these and like i said it's comes down to two things one is just give it time and eventually you'll start to see cherries on it um, or get a larger tree get a more mature tree if you're wanting the fruit a little bit sooner and you don't want to wait uh, these make a beautiful hedge if you're wanting uh, something to be a nice hedge. Um, you can also squeeze these in a lot of HOA neighborhoods, even in the front yards, because it really just, for the most of the year, just looks like a green, just a green bush. And then it puts on its cherry so rapidly, like you wouldn't have to worry about getting caught or getting in trouble by having a, a cherry tree in your front yard. And then you could definitely put these in the backyard. And they're a wonderful filler, and we don't have that many fruiting bushes. You know, we've got citrus, pomegranates, figs sometimes. And for the most part, we're sort of limited on the bushes. So it's nice to get um, these as one of your fill-ins. Now, these will get big. I mean, I've seen these two-story house large, um, but that's just, they let it go. You know, it was on flood irrigation, got all the water it wanted, and it became a very, very very large plant man look at the leaves on these these are just enormous and if you know anything about barbados cherries you know that the leaves are normally a lot a lot smaller than this this thing just has some like huge leaves like almost like a pear <laughs> those almost looks like pear leaves so just enormous look at my hand so these are definitely happy because they're being fed so that goes to the feeding like what do i feed these plants so i feed these plants the same thing that i feed everything else and that is compost so three times a year you'll more or less kind of pull back your your wood chips or your ground cover and you'll put your compost back here at the root zone when you go to feed the plant now i'm not using so much anymore because I've got a natural system, I've got enough earthworms, and I've got enough natural leaf fall and wood fall that I don't have to re put back a whole bunch of compost. But that's what I did for several years to get these going. And you can see when I pull back these leaves, like that's literally nothing but pure earthworm castings. See all those little nuggets right there on the ground? Like they've processed so much material out here that it just stacks on the ground. Look at this. Very important because you need good drainage also for tropical fruit trees. I mean, look at this. This is like, oh my gosh. This is literally black gold. This is literally like, I probably have a million dollars worth of earthworm castings in the yard being produced by the earthworms. Look at that. That is solid, solid earthworm castings, probably as far down as I could dig. I 
I mean, it's always nice when you can dig that far down with your hand also, especially in the Arizona soil. But yeah, literally, it's probably a couple feet thick of just pure, pure earthworm castings. Man, that is just amazing soil. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this back up again. That's the reason why it looks so good in, underneath there. Because I've got all this cover. And then let's walk back over here and let's finish talking about the care that uh, Barbados cherries need. So we covered food, compost, water. These guys need a lot of water. Um, they need more so during the hot months. Uh, they've got a lot, a lot of roots. Let's go take a look at another one. All right, and here is one in a pot. Like I said, I like to grow the nice big specimen trees that kind of go out 360 every direction. No matter how you, you turn and move around the plant, you've got beautiful, uh, just a beautiful 360 bush. So these are the ones that I like to, to grow and sell is a little bit more of the larger size so you can see this is in a 25 gallon pot and it's already a nice big mature bush it's about my height actually a little bit taller a little bit taller than me but yeah nice big specimen plants so that they these ones are already ready to go what's nice is they will not freeze so bad or not die in the winter. If you've got smaller plants, the problem with smaller Barbados cherries is they do freeze in the winter. Now they love the heat. So 10 months out of the year, they are happy, happy, happy. In fact, they look the best while the rest of your plants are melting and look horrible. <laughs> the Barbados cherries kind of pick up that time period. Oh man, look at those leaves. Those things are just enormous, enormous. Uh, lots of water. So you'll notice when or if you buy one, depending on what size pot that it's in, you'll notice when you pull it out of there, it's going to have more roots than any other plant that you've ever pulled out of a pot ever. In fact, the whole outside wall of the plant of the pot is probably covered with white roots from the Barbados cherry. It's got a lot of roots. Now, it's got a nice shallow root system, but it's got a lot of those roots, a lot of those feeder roots. So you'll notice that these need irrigated or watered in a pot more often than you would normally water up a, a plant because all the roots are on that outside edge. And if that dries up a couple of days, then it more or less kills the roots that are on the outside of the plant. And there goes your Barbados cherry. It'll start to look, look terrible. Now, if you start to water it again, of course, it's going to perk back up and reflush back out again because these are a bulletproof plant like i said they're real close to a pomegranate as far as i'm concerned as far as the care goes except for the winter i wish they did go dormant in the winter they go semi-dormant they're going to lose probably half their leaves and the tips might freeze but you just cut them back and they grow back with a vengeance in fact i cut this that one in the planter back this last year from the freeze and it not only regrew completely but it also is soaked in soaked in cherries so um that in fact you can kind of see the the root system right here up on the top it's just got millions of roots millions and millions of roots okay so i think i covered everything when will it fruit um how mature it needs to be in order to fruit um they they freeze they love the heat so really good for uh good for arizona uh beautiful tree i mean they're just stunning and when they get the blooms on them they're beautiful and when they get the fruit they're they're even more beautiful uh covered the food compost 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 i mean i tell you the guys that all the time that's how i have this beautiful yard is i've got the good drainage and the earthworms and the soil life and that's why everything thrives so these obviously do well that way too i would plant this with 60 40 compost I would do 60% compost, 40% native soil instead of your standard 50-50 mix. And that'll get them going, get them a really good size before the winter comes. And I think I covered water, lots of water. 
Um, it's a tropical plant, so it loves loves the water. Um, water maybe once a week in the winter time. They don't quite need so much in the winter time, but here is a fall fruit, and you guys are always wanting fall fruits and always complaining about nothing being ready in the fall, but you have to consider like most of your tropicals. Oh, look at a little cherry. Well, cherry. Most of your tropicals are going to fruit in the fall. Um, they've had a nice summer as far as they're concerned. I mean, if I turn around right here and look at these star fruit, I mean, look at the amount of blooms on this star fruit. I mean, this thing's just covered. Just covered. And setting fruit. You can see them. You can see them already starting to set those little star fruits. See them? They're so cute. <laughs> so, yeah, that is when they, uh, that is when they fruit. So if you guys want, just think about it this way. Your stone fruits and your figs and your apples, you're going to get all those in the spring. And then you're going to get all your tropical fruits, your Barbados cherries and your star fruits and some mangoes and bananas and guavas. Those are all in the fall. So yeah, guys, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of love to spread around. So, all right, guys, if you made it to the end of this video, uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe and give me a like on this video. If you guys, uh, enjoy me making these fruit tree videos, I'm going to be doing a lot more of them now that it's cool. This summer was brutal and nobody wants to be outside. So, all right, guys, Barbados cherries. Um, I carry larger specimens of these uh, normally. And I just, I, I don't deal too much with the, with the smaller on these guys, but they are, they are available. All right, guys, that is Barbados cherries. Thank you for watching.